Hey, how you doing? This is Lena, also known as Arlene Rogers Will Hyde Williams. And I'm coming at you again with messages of the heart from A to Z. And we are on letter O. It's been a couple of months, maybe a month or two, when um, I did the letter M. And um, usually, like I said, sometimes... Uh, the messages will come soon, sometimes they'll come later, you know, but I try not to ever give out a message unless I have some type of inspiration or something. And um, so right after I did the messages uh, with the letter M, and uh, I'm sorry, it was N, naysayers, that's right, naysayers. Anyway, right after that, um, it came to me that, okay, O only has to be opportunities. So we're going to be talking about opportunities right now. And I have some notes here I'm going to be reading this time because I wanted to make sure that I um, got my point across what I was trying to say about opportunities. Okay, so here we are. Today is February 11th, and it's a day after my granddaughter just had her fifth birthday. My goodness, oh my, how time flies. But I'm not going to keep you long on this video either because it's just basic. You know, we're going to talk about opportunities. And, um... Like I said, I'm just going to read some stuff to you, and um, if you agree with it, fine. If not, you know, that's okay, too, because I'm not trying to uh, say that I know everything. Messages of the heart mean that this is coming from my heart to you. Okay, opportunities. We can make them, take them, or fake them out. Sabotage them, crush them, give them away to other people. So, that can mean that we can benefit from them. Yes. Anytime that we can give somebody else an opportunity, then that will open a door for us to benefit from giving others the opportunity. Opportunities, we can have them in love, we can have them in business, religion, educational, or society, socially. Opportunities, they never go away. I believe that there's an opportunity in everything. Sometimes we should take the opportunity, sometimes we should not take the opportunity. That's neither here nor there. That's something that we have to, as individuals, have to, excuse me, decide for ourselves. Even if we do sabotage an opportunity, one or the same or another will present itself again. Trust me, I'll talk about that later, how I have sabotaged so many opportunities. Opportunities in my life seem to always walk right beside me. As I remember them, later... I came to call them blessings or blessings in disguise or simply open doors to get to greater blessings. Nonetheless, blessings and opportunities have come to be one and the same to me. Even as a survivor of child abuse, I found opportunity in that. That's kind of sad to say, but trust me. I didn't come to this realization until I was ready to face the facts of my abuse. Then later on, I went, went back over my life and I saw that the opportunities did come from me being sexually abused. I learned to think before I say anything. I learned to scheme. And I learned to maneuver my abuser. I learned to hide things with a straight face and learn to use my sexuality to get over. Now, these things may sound negative or breathtaking, like, ooh, ah. But in actuality, these negativities help me to be, the, be very wise in business, alertness, in social settings, and attentive in school and job places. That's how I view them as blessings in disguise later in life and in retrospect. This did not happen then. Well, at the time I was going through my trials and tribulations, that's what they were to me, trials and tribulations. I did not see them as opportunities. I didn't see them as blessings in disguise or anything like that. As a drug dealer, before I became my best customer, I learned that opportunities and how to conduct myself in business deals by being a drug, app, drug dealer. Um... I'm not saying to be a drug dealer is good or nothing like that, but I'm just keeping it real right here because I know sometimes people out there, they do what they have to do to survive. And I did dwell in drug dealing and drug addiction. So 
I learned how to do math in my head real fast, dealing with drugs, and how to make quick business decisions, and um, how I learned how to make decisions in dangerous place, t- times, moments, and how to look for good and bad opportunities in my environment. I was always looking for schemes. I was always looking for somehow to get over. I was looking for opportunities to get over. Now, I'm not saying sexual abuse or drug dealing is good. I'm saying for me, I took the opportunities out of each and made them work for me to the best of my ability for what I had to work with at the time. The opportunities have been endless for me to be a person of significance and means. Being in school, I learned the academics of life, but I never applied them in my life to go to the next level. I never used my academic knowledge to further my career or to um, advance myself on a job or anything like that. No, I was into academics, but I was into the streets. I love the streets more than I love academics, but I stayed in both. I took the opportunities of the academic curriculum for granted. And when school was out, back in the day when school was out, it was out. I went out to play, you know, I went out to do my thing, stuff like that. And uh, when I say that I took it for granted, like I said, I didn't use it to go to the next level. I didn't use it to go to no Ivy League college or anything like that. I just stayed in school because it was an opportunity for me to have money in my pocket through grants and loans and blah, blah, blah. So uh, uh, when I wasn't working, I knew I can always have money if I stayed in school. You understand what I'm saying? I used that as an opportunity. When school was out, talking about when I was younger, I went back to what was comfortable, what was comfortable for me. And that was, I knew that once I went home or once I went back into the hood or whatever, I was going to be involved in drugs, I was going to be involved with fights, I was going to be involved involved with sexual abuse, Uh, I was just going to be involved with uh, other things besides school, which I was comfortable in. Yes, it's sad to say, you know, I got to the point where I was comfortable being abused until, like like I said, I just learned how to, you know, make it work for me. And um, as long as I was in that environment, I was cool. When I was in school, I was very smart, very intelligent. I was in special classes. Well, let me back up on that. Not special ed classes. I was in special classes for the gifted, you know. But even then, I didn't even take advantage of that because I knew I was smart. So, you know, it wasn't nothing. All I wanted to do is do what I had to do and then go outside and play, play with the boys, fight the girls, whatever I had to do. Anything, anything but advance my intellectual self to... um, a life of easy living, so to speak. You know what I'm saying. So anything, anyway, I went back to what was com- what I was comfortable um, being abused and messing with drugs and playing with my friends and stuff, and looking forward to playing good, good games like hide and go get it and red light green light and Mama May I and stuff like that. And suffice it to say, even these games eventually became opportunistic ways of life to advance with. And I don't want to go into that, you know, stuff like that. But I can break down each game, how it became an opportunity for something or another in my life. But I think you get the, the message here. How I didn't go get it, I learned to sneak around with people's men. Red light, green light, I learned that hanging in the streets can put you behind bars. And the judge put me in jail and gave the red light green lights on my life when i can come and when i can go and how many times i had to ask my mama may i that a giant step in life a smaller one to go here to go there and so on and so forth so you see what i'm saying that even those little kitty games at some point or another it came about to teach me something about life I didn't know it then, I didn't see it then, but I'm just trying to, you know, like, be funny right here that red light, green light taught me this and that and the other, and how I'm going to get it taught me this, that, and the other. So you see what I'm saying? Anyway, do you know what I'm getting to is the question that I asked after that. Opportunities forever present themselves to us, but we have to see them, use them, and break them down to be either good ones or bad ones. Well, 
And like I said, this is a short video, but I pray that when you are faced with either big opportunities, small opportunities, good or bad, you will use them for the glory of God. And if you don't, do not know the Lord, seek guidance and assistance from a parent counselor or that pit in your stomach to lead you in the right direction. Sometimes that pit in the stomach, pardon me, will lead you in the right direction. And I really don't have too much more to say about opportunities except to, uh, now I can say, to open your eyes and um, check out the things that happen around you. Everything, I believe, everything that we are part of in the society brings about some kind of opportunity. And then, like I said, it's up to us to realize what is this opportunity for? Where is it going to take us? What will it do for us? What will it do for others? Is it worth my time? Is it worth your time? I think that if we look at opportunities, we will see a blessing somewhere. Because God, my God, I choose to serve God. God is in everything, good and bad. He's in everything. But it's up to us. we got to break it down. we got to research we got to think we got to pray about certain things we got to feel certain things we got to know certain things we got to hear certain things in order for us to know what kind of opportunity where's this blessing coming from where's this going to take us you know what i'm saying and i hope that um as you listen to this video that you will understand i'm talking fast and stuff like that but i hope you will go between the line even if you have to listen to the video again to know what your opportunity is in this life a long time ago i broke it down uh i was saying that independence is another way of saying pride you know at some point or, or another our independence can lead us into a prideful state just like i'm saying opportunities opportunities can be a blessing Sometimes our opportunities can be a blessing, but a lot of people do not like to say blessings because a lot of people don't believe in God. So I'm just saying it like this. Look for your opportunities. Look for your blessings. You feel what I'm saying? And while you're working on your independence, where is your pride? At how, not at how, but at what point does your independence become pride? And at one point, does your opportunities become blessings, show themselves as blessings? Anyway, I don't want to ramble on because I don't want to take the power out of what I'm trying to say. So peace out to you and uh, you take care of yourself. And if you like my hat, look for me on Facebook at Loving My Hats by Lena and check it out. And remember that the whole world is a stage and everybody plays a part. And that means that there are opportunities in everything that we do and places that we go. So peace out to you. God bless you. And I'll check you out next time. I don't know how soon I'm coming back. I don't know how long it's going to be. But whenever I do come back, I'll be sure to give you a message from the heart. God bless.